أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد As we left off in our last session speaking about the philosophy of dua and why it is that we supplicate, we were pointing out a very important aspect that we all have as human beings and that is that we have a natural inclination, uh, a fitrah that exists with us as human beings towards praying and supplicating and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only thing that we need to do is look back at other civilizations from the very beginning of creation up to today and see that it is indeed something that all civilizations, all societies practiced one way or another. And we also said that this is disregarding the form of worship, the way a person supplicates and even to who it is that they are supplicating or worshipping or praying to. Nonetheless, we can still see, or disregarding all of this, we can still see that it is something that was practiced. We also said that an, a very important point is that even though that it, this is a natural instinct in all human beings, it doesn't mean that everyone practices it. There are people who practice it on all occasions, at all times, there are people who practice it on particular occasions and there are people who do not practice it at all. We can also see that the majority of us, the majority of the overwhelming majority of human beings do turn towards worshipping and praying and supplicating at times when we need it the most, when we are very desperate when we are in dire need and when we are disturbed in a particular way, we do turn towards praying and supplicating and worshipping. Even if we in reality do not even have a particular belief. And so when we say this, we can see that this is a natural disposition that exists within all human beings, but it is, exists as a potentiality. But whether or not it exists in, in, in its actual form, it differs between people. And so this, this uh, ability or this potentiality that exists within human beings, we can say that it is closed and it is the human being that opens it. It is the human being that makes, that gives it out or comes out with it, especially in times of need. And this is exactly what the Holy Quran refers to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa idha massa al-insana ad-durru da'ana li jambihi aw qa'idan aw qa'ima And then of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but let me first translate what what it, what it means here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the uh, the individual supplicates to us whether it be lying down, whether it be on his side, or whether it be um, with light down on his side, whether it be sitting down, or whether it be standing up. لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا In any state that this person is, he supplicates to Allah. And of course, by him saying that he supplicates to Allah in a time of distress, when he is stricken with uh, as distress. It says, as the ayah says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُّرْ means when a harm inflicts a human being, when a harm inflicts an individual, he prays to Allah. Da'ana, he supplicates to us. And how does he supplicate to us? Whether that person is lying down on his side, whether that person is sitting down, whether that person is standing up. And so, as the ayah says, that at a time of need, 
the human being turns to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, and this is the unfortunate um, thing that exists within the human being. This is a, uh, something, again, an, an unfortunate instinct that exists in the human being. And that is that a human being is forgetful. A human being at times of need knows what it is that he or she should do once that um, need or once that feeling of resort and seeking refuge goes away, unfortunately there are some individuals who go back to, to their old ways or go back to doing what it is they were doing prior to that. When they are in need, they turn to God the Almighty. When they are not, they forget what it is that they should be doing. This is the rest of the ayah, which means, and when we remove this distress from the person, the person prays to Allah, Ya Allah, remove this dur that I have, remove this distress that I have, this harm that I, that I have been stricken with. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes this distress, He passes on as if he hasn't supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if he did not, he wasn't the one that was asking God the Almighty to re remove this distress from him. So as the ayah says, فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُنَا And when we remove this distress from the person, he passes on like as if he, it hasn't happened to him. And this reminds me of a, of a it might be a, a funny story, but very interesting. And that is, a person goes into a car park, try, wanting, wanting to park his car. And then he sees that the car park is full of cars and there's no place for him to put his car. So then he says, oh Allah, please help me do this. Find an empty empty space for my car for me and I will worship you or I'll do a particular thing, a, a pledge or a vow. And at that same time, all of a sudden, once he finishes finished the sentence, he saw that there was an empty space for him to park his car. So then straight away he said, uh, Ya Allah, there's no need for, for you to, um, to do anything because I just found it. Not realizing that it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that facilitated that for him. And so at times of hardship, we realize that this is what we do. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, even at times of hardship, we realize that even though we do turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but after something that happens or after that thing or after the call of the prayer or after the removal of the distress, we turn back to how we were. Another story is mentioned where a person is on a ship and the ship is going through very strong, harsh waves. Um, just about to, uh, uh, the, the ship is just about to fall apart and he was about to, dr to, 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 to drown. And so he says to Allah, Oh Allah, please help me get rid of this um, thunder and all this strong rain and the, and the heavy waves and everything else and I will sacrifice 50 sheep for you. A while later, the thunder stops. So he says, oh, there's no need for me to sacrifice 50 sheep. 50 sheep, oh Allah, um, get rid of the waves and I will sacrifice 30 sheep. So this keeps on going until he reaches land. When he reaches land, he says, oh Allah, there's no need for me to sacrifice 50 or 30 or 20 or 10 sheep anymore. I've got to land. So... Um, there's no need for me to sacrifice anything. Why is it that he went through all of these stages? Because he has not realized that at the time of hardship, number one, this is the point that we're trying to make, at the time of hardship, in the, all human beings turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately there are some that even after they have turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for help, and assistance once this distress, once this um, desperate need is gone away, they turn back to their own to their own old ways. 
There is also, of course, something that is mentioned in the Quran. And this that is mentioned in the Quran is that there are, sadly to say, individuals that even at times of distress, even at times of dire need, they still do not turn to God the Almighty. And this is, let me read out the, the ayah, and this is because, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ As the ayah says, they did not, why did they not entreat when our might overtook them? But their hearts had heartened. So it says, why is it? Why is it that when our might overtook them, they did not entreat, they did not turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The only reason is because their hearts had heartened and Satan had made to see, made them to see to decorate that uh, Satan decorated for them, for them not to see what it is that they should be seeing. So Satan had made to see decorous to them what they had been doing. So that instead of them seeing the reality of dua and worship and prayer, instead of that, it was Shaitan that made them uh, not see and made their a'mal in a decorative way that blocked them from seeing the reality and the truth and this led to their hearts becoming qasiyah, their hearts becoming um, hardened. Of course this is, um, or these two very important ayahs that I mentioned in this uh, session today does on its own explain uh, the philosophy of dua and it also gives us our own akhlaqi lesson, an own, a lesson on, its, on the ethics of dua, on the morals of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we, when we pray, we pray with sincerity, we pray knowing that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will call our answer our prayers as He has promised, as the ayah says, Udu'uni astajib lakum. It also says that be careful that when you do pray, when you do supplicate to Allah, don't change five minutes later. Make sure that when you supplicate to Allah and you supplicate with sincerity and Allah does answer your prayer, that it is He, the Almighty, that did call and answer. Do you call to Him and He answered your prayer? At the same time, we need to make sure as Muslims that we do not at all fall away and also we do not, we make sure that we do not become among those who have hard hearts that do not even supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. People who do not even have that very relationship to Allah, even at times of dire need, even at times of distress and desperate, desperateness where all human beings have that potential love and attention and seeking of resort towards God the Almighty. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin wa salamun alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.